Hello guys, welcome back. Today's video is about the Denon PMA1600 integrated amplifier. Not too long ago, this integrated amp retailed for 1600 USD, but it has recently seen a price hike and it now retails for 2100 USD. And my original intent was to compare this to the RCAM SA20 integrated, which sells for 1650 USD which I hope to do anyway. Uh, the comparison video will be coming shortly, but today I'd like to focus on the PMA1600, as there's quite a bit I'd like to share about this uh, interesting amp. By the way, if you haven't watched the RCAM SA20 video, I'll post a link for it uh, in my description or up on a video card. So, the price of this amp, yeah, 1600 USD to 2100 is a steep price hike but to be fair if you ever got a chance to lay your hands on one of these you will notice that it is built like a tank and it's finished really well made in japan weighs about 40 pounds power output is 70 watts at 8 ohms 140 at 4 ohms Ultra high current MOSFET is employed for uh, the power amplifier output stage. Continuous current is stated at 30 amps and the instantaneous current capability is stated at 120 amps. The insides of the amp looks well organized with dual transformers, not toroidal but EI core transformers. But before we start thinking, toroidal transformers are the only way to go for audio. Uh, you should note that these are LC mounted or leak cancelling mounted twin transformers versus the surface mounted kind. The two transformers are connected in parallel to enable cancelling mutual magnetic influences to minimize the leaking of magnetic flux, which is the source of, uh, which is one of the sources of electrical noise to circuits inside the amp. Further, there are six discrete shielded blocks. Specs boast some pretty impressive signal to noise ratios of 108 dB for line stage. The built in phono has an impressive signal to noise ratio, uh, especially the, M, the moving magnet at 89 dB and the moving coil at a very respectable 74 dB. On the front panel, you have the analog mode switch. Press it once and you get into analog one mode, which turns off all the digital circuitry. Press that button again and you're now in analog two mode, which turns off the LED display to further minimize electrical noise interference. Uh, next to the analog mode button is the source direct mode that bypasses tone control circuits for the shortest signal path. Back of the amp, you have three analog RCA inputs, phono, CD, and a network. Uh, there is also a recorder in and out as well. Coming to the digital section, the unit's DAC has a master clock for jitter reduction. Type B USB supports high resolution PCM files up to 32-bit 384 kilohertz sampling and up to 11.2 million hertz DSD via uh, the DOP protocol, DSD over PCM. Two optical and one coax digital audio inputs for 24-bit 192 PCM playback capability. Okay, impressive connectivity and specs, but how does it sound? Speakers used were the BNW Matrix 801 Series 2. For analog sources, the Riga P10 turntable with Koetsu black moving coil. For a uh, moving magnet, I used the Artifon 2M black. While I used the built-in phono quite a bit, I also compared it to outboard phono stages like the more expensive Cord Huey and the Manly Chinook. Okay, let's talk analog first. This album, Ahmad Jamal's Crystal, that's the name of the album, released in 1987. Ahmad Jamal is one of my favorite pianists. It is said that Miles Davis was 
really inspired by Ahmad's playing, um, that he instructed his pianist Bill Evans to play like Ahmad. I do not know how well that sat with Bill Evans, who is also one of my all-time favorite jazz pianists. Okay, so back to this album. Uh, besides Jamal on the Steinway, we have electric bass, drums, and percussion works. This is a beautifully mastered recording that conveys both the might and the nuances um, of the Steinway. Uh, through the built-in phono, the mid-range was rich, warm, bass lines were clearly delineated, the drumming sounded punchy and impactful. Soundstage was deep and wide. The highs from the sophisticated percussion work and cymbals were warm, textured, and had this sweet, saturated, silky tone. The third song on this album is called Avo, and that showcases all this I describe in spades. Switching to an outboard phono stage like the Chord Huey, expensive at 1600 USD, feeding that line in gives a bit more resolution in the mids and a bit more open in the highs. But I was surprised to see how well the built-in phono here conveyed the warmth and punch in the bass um, and the sweetness in the mid-range. Switching to the outboard Manly Chinook, feeding line in to the Denon, this absolutely delights with gobs of texture resolution and soundstage layering and depth. But then again, this phono stage costs way more than the amp itself. But this demonstrates to me how good the line stage is designed and the amplifier is designed. I did, however, notice the added warmth and bloom that was perhaps masking a bit of resolution in the lower mid bass and the higher treble frequencies. This slight lack of resolution in the high frequencies went away when I connected the outboard phono stages like the Huey or the Chinook. But the amp still seems to add warmth and bloom in the, in the mid bass, lower mid bass region. On some tracks, it's absolutely enjoyable. On some others, I noticed the slight lack of transparency. Okay, switching to digital. I used the Audio Nirvana program for Windows 10 to the USB DAC in the Denon to play DSD files. A few functional points to note. You will need to follow the instructions in the manual to ensure the driver for the USB DAC is correctly installed. After the download, ensure that the software you're using to play DSD files has the Play DSD natively setting properly enabled, uh, which is uh, over DOP, and not convert to PCM. So setting up the USB driver for the DAC and the audio Nirvana setting uh, were simple enough. So this digital album by Bill Evans is called Some Other Time, uh, The Lost Black Forest Sessions. And this is in the DSD standard format, which is DSD 64, which is 64 times the CD sampling rate of 44.1 kilohertz, and that's 2.8 million hertz. This is an analog tape to digital transfer. Now, I don't have too much experience with DSD, and I don't have another outboard DAC that does DSD that I can compare this to, but I have the same album on LP and on Quobuz streaming 2496 resolution. Once I hit play, the display on the Denon showed the 2.8 million hertz sampling rate, and so did the Nirvana user interface window. It sounded really good. The bass strings from Eddie Gomez's playing had superb detail. Piano sounded clean. Cymbal work had nice shimmer, and the sound stage depth was impressive. Compared to the LP itself, via the built-in phono stage, I noticed more resolution on the DSD than the Denon's built-in phono. The LP via the built-in MC sounded warmer and really pleasant as well, but there was a there was just more presence with playing this album via DSD. 
I also tried the album called When Night Falls by Angelo Verplogen. This is a DSD direct recording in the 256 format. When I hit play, the display on the Audio Nirvana changed from DSD to PCM, 32 bit, 176 hertz, kilohertz. And the Denon also displayed the 176.4 kilohertz uh, sample rate. So the DAC input, the Denon DAC was seeing PCM uh, instead of native DSD for this 256 format. The same happened with other DSD files that have a resolution greater than the DSD64. The Denon USB DAC was converting any DSD file above 64 resolution to uh, PCM instead of playing it natively. This was using the ASIO audio driver format. Using the Wasapi driver format, the bitrate dropped from 32 to 24 bit, but the sampling seemed to increase to 192 kilohertz from the 176 kilohertz. Again, this happened only when using DSD files with a resolution greater than 64 times. DSD64 files, though, played natively using the DOP every single time. But getting to the sound quality here of this album, When Night Falls, via the USB DAC, you could really appreciate the tonal colors of the saxophone and the tone of the guitar. The detailed retrieval Angelo's breath takes while playing the saxophone was very clear to hear. Same album via the 2496 via Cobas seemed to lose a bit of that resolution I mentioned, but still sounded really good. The sound of the saxophone was detailed enough with sweetness to the guitar tone as well. Okay, now switching to just Cobas streaming via um, optical and coax using Blue Sound Node 2i streamer. Listening to the album Tales of Mystery and Imagination by Alan Parsons' project was so much fun. You should listen to this track called Telltale Heart. It's Poe's short story prose work, but it's rendered on steroids. The bass slam and impact was stunning. Uh, emotions of despair from the vocalist then turns to remorse and then back into sheer terror, all very eloquently conveyed via the Denon's built-in DAC. I thoroughly enjoyed the built-in DAC and it is one of the best built-in DACs I've heard lately. Very high quality indeed. So to conclude my impressions here, this is a warm yet punchy and dynamic sounding amp. It will suit those who are searching for a relaxed, laid back sound, but uh, also for those who don't want to sacrifice too much detail. The built-in MM and MC phono stage is sweet sounding. Again, punchy in the bass, warm mids, sweet highs, and a very respectable moving coil performance. If there is a criticism, you guessed it, I already mentioned it, is that I wish there was a little bit less warmth in the mid-bass region to allow for more detail to come through. Its strengths in reproducing deep bass, warm and seductive mid-range, and high frequencies easily make up uh, for it, in my humble opinion. My advice would be to not match this amp with speakers that are already warm or dark sounding. Uh, but I believe they'd make a superb match to neutral and highly resolving speakers. I do hope to make a video sometime shortly, hopefully, about how this compares to the other amps in this price range that I have recently reviewed. But I hope you found this video useful if you're looking to purchase this amp. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you soon.